What does it mean for a linear relationship to be proportional or non-proportional? I am going to start out answering this question by calculating the ratio of my y values to my x values. So I'm going to calculate y over x for each row of my table and see what happens. But I'm actually going to skip the first row just for now. We'll come back to this row because it's special, but we're going to skip it for now because y over x would be 0 over 0. Let's try the other values first and see what happens. So for this row, the 1 and the 4, I would write 4 over 1. For the next row, I would write 8 over 2. And for the next row, I would write 12 over 3. So I'm comparing my y values to my x values. So my first row, I have 4. My second row, 8 over 2 also equals 4. And 12 over 3 also equals 4. These are all the same. The ratio of y to x is constant. And so we can call this k our constant of proportionality. So 4 is the constant of proportionality for this linear relationship. And the fact that it is the same for all the rows like that, as a constant of proportionality always will be, tells us that this relationship is proportional. So this is a proportional relationship. Now let's look at the other table. So if I divide my y values by my x values, and I'm going to skip the first row because I don't want to divide by 0 and maybe hurt somebody. So I have 6 over 1. 22 over 5 and 30 over 7. Oh, those are kind of um, interesting numbers. Let me calculate those really quick. So 6 over 1 obviously equals 6. 22 over 5 is equal to 4.4. And 30 over 7, well, you know what? I actually have to round for that because the decimals go on quite a long ways, but it's about 4.3. It's close to that. And you know what, these, these are not equal, these are all different. So I don't have a constant of proportionality. The ratio of y over x is not constant. And so that means this is a non-proportional relationship. Now, there's a shortcut here, y'all, and I want you to know about it. Let's go back to those first rows of our table. This, uh, you'll, this will make sense in a minute, but if the row 0, 0 is in your table, if your linear relationship that the table represents goes through 0, 0, then it's proportional. You can see that in our other table, it does not go through 0, 0. When I have an x value of 0, my y value is 2. So that tells me that would not be proportional. And it'll make sense why that's the case when we think about proportional relationship graphs. So here are the values in those tables graphed. And check it out. Here's the point 0, 0. That's the origin. So the graph of my proportional relationship goes through the origin. The graph of my non-proportional relationship does not go through the origin. So since it does not go through the origin, that's another way that I can tell that it is non-proportional. Now, what if I wanted to find the slopes of these two lines? Remember, the slope formula tells us that our slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let me try that with each of these tables. I'm going to pick two points to be x1, y1, and x2, y2. I'll do that for each table. And remember, we established in the last video that it doesn't matter which two points I pick as long as I know the relationship is linear. So doing a little bit of math, I can find that both of these graphs have a slope of 4 over 1. They both go up 4 and over 1. But there is a shortcut way that I can do that with my proportional relationship. I can really just divide my y value by my, by my x value. So I could do 4 over 1 using this point, and I would get 4. I could do 8 over 2 using my next point, and that would give me 4. Or I could do 12 over 3, and that would give me 4. So when my relationship is proportional, there's a shortcut way to find the slope. There's an easier way to get the rate of change than using the slope formula. But that only applies when my relationship is proportional. And that's because for proportional relationships, the slope is the unit rate. The slope is the constant of proportionality. Oh, that's not the case when it's non-proportional. Um, so let's look at what contexts these might represent. So perhaps in this graph on the left, I might say each movie ticket costs $4. We're back in the 1990s and movies aren't expensive. So I could write an equation, y equals 4x, that would be proportional, and 4 is my constant of proportionality. 
It's my slope, which I could also call my rate of change, and it is also my unit rate. It's the cost of each movie ticket, so it has real world meaning to me. That slope tells me what each movie ticket costs. In the graph on the right, my slope is four here too, because the movie tickets still cost $4. So each movie ticket costs $4, and there was a $2 processing charge also, because I paid online with my credit card. So now my equation is y equals 4x plus 2. So this time my slope is not equal to my unit rate. I do not have a constant of proportionality for this graph. Um, but my slope is still 4 because each movie ticket still costs $4. And these are the formulas that I could use to calculate the rate of change for each, each of these graphs. Of course, I know that this one would still work over here. It's just that I don't have to do that extra step of finding the change in y and the change in x because my relationship is proportional. So why do we have different letters for the slope and the constant of proportionality? It's because proportional rela linear relationships are really just a special type of linear relationship. It's kind of like how a pit bull is a type of dog. A proportional linear relationship is a type of linear relationship. It goes under that bigger umbrella, but they are two different ideas. And so for linear relationships, we have a slope, and we represent it using the letter m, and it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It's our change in y over our change in x. And then for proportional linear relationships, we represent our rate of change using k, which is our y values over our x values. And so k and m really do represent distinct ideas because k is talking about a specific subset of linear relationships that also happen to be proportional. And because they're proportional, we can use a little shortcut when calculating our rate of change.